Good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today, on our series of things you may have missed in Elden Ring, we're continuing with part two of the Mountain Tops of the Giants. And I meet you now in the Spirit Caller Cave, which is pretty much directly southwest of where we fought the giant dragon at the end of the last video. As I'm heading into the cave, I'd just like to say, please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this content, and please give the video a like if you enjoy. Firstly, make sure you avoid this huge hole in the ground. It won't be there initially. I did already tumble down it once, which is why it's now there. And as we're running down this branch, the gimmick of this cave is every single enemy is being kept alive and keeps respawning because of the spirit caller snails. So I'll show you where they are to make your run a little bit easier. Just after we've killed this first one here, we can grab five arteria leaf. And then as you're heading down into this tunnel, just off on the left, you'll get a hero's rune one, a golden rune 10 and a rune arc. After you've grabbed them, we'll head back out the other way and continue on down. Just off to the right here, where this snail and wolf is, is exactly where you fall down if you accidentally fall into the cave. And now you don't need to take out Inaba, Disciple of Akina, because there is actually no reward for defeating them. So after dying the first time, I'm going to come back here, and once I've taken them out, you'll see I get no items and no runes. So the best thing for you to do is actually just hop directly down below and kill the Spirit Caller Snail just here. This next area is absolutely riddled with enemies, and there are two snails controlling them all, so I suggest you sprint past everything and take out the snails as quickly as possible. Right next to where you kill this one, you can also pick up the white reed armor set, and then the other one is just over here. Now that all the enemies are dead, we can go around and grab the invigorating white cured meat as well. And we're at the boss. The boss is a spirit godskin apostle who is just as tough as the other one we already fought in the Divine Tower of Kaelid. And then when you kill him, he will be immediately followed by a godskin noble, who again is equally as tough as the one in Volcano Manor. Good luck with them. They make this a very tricky fight, just because you've already probably exhausted quite a few of your healing items before you've got here. And then when they both die, the spirit caller snail will reveal itself. Once you've taken him out, you'll get the godskin swaddling cloth and the Black Flame Ritual. And just so you know, the Godskin Swaddling Cloth is a talisman, which means that the more attacks you do in succession, the more HP you'll restore, so that's pretty cool. I've never tried it, so I don't know how effective it is. Usually HP restoration talismans in this game restore such a tiny amount that it's not worth it, but maybe worth considering. Now we'll head back out of this cave and into the next tip. Back out the front, we're going to start heading down towards the south. Just off to the south, you'll see the Forge of the Giants, which we'll be going to to defeat the main boss for the area later on. Not in this part of the video, but later on in the series. And over to the right-hand side is an even more horrible version of the crayfish that we are going to be avoiding. Now, over to the southeast here, you can get the Somberstone Miner's Bell Bearing 3, which means you can now get all of your Somberstone weapons up to plus 6. And also, in the First Church of America, you can grab a Sacred Tear, and then once you've got the Sight of Grace, head to the east on top of this mountain and you'll get three smithing stones, seven. Once you're done there, head west and you can grab the golden runes from these tombs here. Just be careful of all the dogs that are around. Then just behind them, you want to jump up this spirit spring and go and challenge the boss at the Lord Contender's Everjail. Here you will fight another version of Vike. I believe he's probably a lot stronger than the version we fought back in the Altus Plateau, but he didn't give me much trouble, probably just because I spammed spells at him. And you're awarded with his fingerprint armor set and Vike's Dragon Bolt which is very, very awesome. For the next few minutes, I'm just gonna head north towards a tower that you can see off in the distance, taking out all the hot air balloons for some golden rune 12 and dealing with all the marionettes. So once you've cleared up all them, I'll meet you at the entrance to the tower where we are advised by the statue that falling snow marks something unseen. I've just come round to the west of the tower, and you can see off on the other side of the mountain is a broken bridge. That's where we're going to aim for next. So let's teleport back over to the freezing lake, and once I've dealt with all the skeletons, I will meet you there. And as we're running towards the edge of the bridge, I'm going to jump off my horse. Oh, oh, what? Magic. Now, for anyone here that's played Dark Souls 3, was it 3 that they did this? As far as I'm aware, the snow is supposed to be landing on the invisible bridge and showing you the way. There should be shimmers on the bridge. But damned if I could see any. So what I'm going to do now is fumble around trying to enable online mode so that other people's bloodstains and messages can guide the way for me. So I will meet you back here in the next part of the tip once I finally manage to get myself online. And here we are. That looks better. So as you can see, once you walk a certain way down, there is actually a shimmer leading up off to the left here. Now, this isn't the shimmer I was expecting. This is more defined. This is actually 
too easy to follow for me. I much preferred how they did it in Dark Souls when you really had to pay attention to the snow falling on the bridge. This is literally just a path you can follow. But I'm very confused as to why it's not along the main bit and just on this little side bit. But either way, we've made it. We're now on our way up to the tower and we have now made it in to the heretical rise. Beware of lots of enemies in here. I always forget the name of these buggers, but you know the ones. And as always, let's work our way up to the top of the tower. And this time we'll be rewarded with the founding reign of stars, which is a legendary spell. Doing that opened up the rise so we can just walk back out the main entrance and I'll meet you there for the next part of the video. For the next few minutes, there's just going to be lots of running and killing as we get towards the next site of grace. So just work your way south toward the battlements that you see off in the distance. You can grab five explosive great bolts here. Then there's a load of enemies I'm going to spend some time clearing up, like the giant dogs that you see in Kaelid. And also there's a little cluster of lava slugs here as well, where you can grab some smouldering butterflies. Once you've had fun killing all the enemies, get to the front of the barricades, and you'll see the White Ridge Road site of Grace just here. Also, I've only just noticed, have you seen that when you rest now, there's a little white circle to let you know if you have extra flask upgrades that you haven't used? I kind of don't like that and wish there was an option to turn it off. Like, you know me, I'm not elitist at all, but I do do really like the difficulty level of Dark Souls. I like having to figure out everything by yourself, having to remember where all the NPCs are, having to remember if you've got flask upgrades, realizing when you've died halfway through the game that you've actually got 10 flasks you forgot to upgrade. I really like coming to them realizations. I don't want the game to tell me to do it. I'd go and play fucking Horizon if I wanted that. No offense, Horizon. Little bit of offense. Uh, David, could you cut that out, please, so that people don't think there's a little bit of elitist in me? Okay, thanks. <laughs> Work your way up to the fort you see on the right hand side here. You can just run past all the enemies if you want, but I'm going to spend some time killing them all so that I can freely loot the area. And as you can see, just after we beat this big boy, we can get a stone sword key. And now that the area is completely clear, we'll head inside Guardian's Garrison and I'll meet you there. Okay, so I end up making this look a lot more difficult than it needs to be because I was recording this very late at night I was very tired and my skills were not on point Ideally, I really should have waited for the next play session But I just really really wanted to get it done for you because I was having a lot of fun So once you've cleared the rat and the flame guardian from the ground floor here You can loot the flowers, but there's nothing else of note down here now head up the stairs and deal with the other rat And here you can grab six smoldering butterflies now I'm going to run out the back where you're ambushed by a dog and you can get a golden rune 10. Then I'm going to fumble around for about the next 10 minutes trying to figure out where I'm supposed to actually go. I aggro this guy down from the ramparts in the hopes that he'll show me the way and he just decides to yeet himself off the edge. But finally, I spot the ladder and it's in the corner where these flowers were just behind these barrels. So let's head up the ladder, deal with the first flame guardian, deal with the second one and then grab the smithing stone 7 from the end here. Now we can back up a little bit and jump off onto the wooden balcony around the edge of the fort. Head up here and then be careful because on your left is a little dog and a big dog that are about to just absolutely wreck my shit. So we'll beeline it through all the enemies, we'll come back and we'll try that again. This time Nebula makes short work of the dogs and we're left to face Chief Guardian Arganthi. Once he's dead you'll get the one-eyed shield which I've never used, but looks awesome. Not much of a shield user in these games. I start off using the shield because guard counters are awesome, but then I decide I just want to swing big weapons around and do lots of damage. And then right at the top of this tower, you can help yourself to the giant's prayer book. Now teleport back to White Ridge, Ro White Ridge, White Ridge Road. Now teleport back to White Ridge Road and I'll meet you there. Once you're done at the garrison, head back outside and carry on heading south and we're finally going to go and grab the map for the area. There's nothing else on this part of the mountain, so come straight to this chain and head over to the next area. As soon as you get here, you can grab the map and a Sight of Grace. And I'm just going to venture slightly out from the Sight of Grace and just test the strength of the enemies here. Yeah, this giant yeti sasquatch guy has got like over 10,000 health and does an insane amount of damage. So I imagine that's going to be the first and last one of them I try and kill. Also, yay, the finger creepers are back. Just what I always wanted. So I'm going to be avoiding the majority of the enemies for the next part of this video. However, by killing this big boy here, you do get a somber smithing stone seven the first time you kill him. So I advise trying to kill each of the big ones at least once if you do need some somber smithing stones. Now we're going to start heading all the way over to the west here. I'll skip through most of the journey as it's very uneventful, apart from three invigorating white cured meat just here. 
and be super careful if you want to grab this drawstring holy grease because that finger creeper very nearly grabbed me. Now I am going to make the most butt clenching jump of my entire life over the finger creeper that just decided to try and jump scare me as I was jumping over the mountain pass and we are now at the giant conquering hero's grave. I'm going to grab that site of grace and then leave it for now and mark a few points on the map that we're going to go and do first because I really want to postpone doing that cave for as long as possible. The majority of the run to all the items I've marked on the map is very uneventful and also very straightforward, so I'll skip most of it. However, just as we're coming southeast up this hill, a literal gigantic finger creeper will one-shot this bird by jumping on it here and proceed to try and absolutely destroy us. Sprint away from him and before long you can come to a site of grace and reset him. I'm now going to spend some time trying to kill him because something that big must give some awesome rewards, right? Like a somber ancient smithing stone and 50,000 runes. Yeah, nah. He gives you 4k runes, nothing else, and respawns. Just ignore him. He is not worth your time at all. Now you can keep heading north and grab this golden seed. You know, I said I was going to ignore the rest of the Sasquatch Yeti enemies. Yeah, that's why. That was a bad idea. So that officially will be the last time I try and fight one of them. Now, if you want, as we're running to the next tip, you can grab the Golden Rune 10 here. And I'm going to start doing some very precarious mountain climbing on Torrent to get on top of these rocks. And up here, you can grab yourself a load of Arteria Leaf. Now, we'll drop down off towards the east, and I've reached one of the beacons I placed and realised we're in the wrong area. We actually need to be below where we currently are. So head round to the southeast as you're following the edge of the mountains, and eventually the cliff will level off enough that you can drop down and go underneath. As we're going along the edge of the cliff, following the underpass here, there will be an insane amount of finger creepers that start to drop down and ambush you the further down you get. I'll skip most of it, but I'll leave in a bit of the footage so that you can see where we are, but it's pretty boring it's mostly just me killing about 20 finger creepers until we get to the end here when we see an epic item in this little bowl and just as i try and grab it i'm ambushed and nearly killed by another giant finger creeper this fight is very intense and i end up having to retreat a few times as i'm spamming spells at him and trying to kill him for our efforts we are rewarded not only with the somber smithing stone 7 for killing him but also the crimson whirl bubble tier which restores your health every time you are hit and for every hit you take it restores 5% of your max health. So as usual with these healing things, not really worth it. Most enemies by this point are two-shotting you. 5% of health will make you be three-shot at best. Not really worth it. And with that, let's move into the next part. Back at the site of Grace, where we were attacked by the humongous finger creeper, head pretty much directly west, and before long, you'll be invaded by Bloody Finger Okina, who is wielding the Rivers of Blood, and when defeated, will give you the Rivers of Blood and the Okina Mask. Now, I've heard that this is one of the most overpowered weapons in the game, and that its unique skill, Corpus Pilot, is absolutely insane. So, I end up wielding this for the next few videos, and I'm not really that blown away by it, if I'm honest. So, I think I'll end up switching back, but you'll get to see me try it out during the next few segments of this series. It may be that it's just really, really good in PvP, but for PvE, I wasn't blown away by it. Also at this church, you can get a sacred tier, and if you hop up the cliffs here and into the mouth of this giant skull, you'll get an ancient dragon smithing stone. And finally for this guide, head to the south and behind these rocks you'll see a spirit spring. Use it and you'll be able to get right on the very top of this giant mountain for the Ash of War Trolls Roar. We'll leave it there for this one, and we'll continue exploring the northern and western parts of the mountaintops of the giants in the next part. So all I have left to say is I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.